In this video, we're going to do a little bit of review of prerequisite material. This is uh, all stuff that I expect that you have seen before, although it may have been some time. Uh, so we're going to, and it's definitely necessary for our next learning module. So we're going to spend some time reviewing systems of linear, sorry, systems of linear equations. So you should have done the reading already. Um, and that introduced the vocabulary consistent and inconsistent. Uh, rem <clears throat> so you know that a consistent system is one that has a solution. And since the solution to a system is a solution to each equation, and a solution to an equation is well, corresponds to a point in the line, it means there's a point on every graph. So in this first system, this point right here is on both graphs. Um, that means it's a solution to both equations, which means since two equations make up my system here, um, that means it's a system to the entire thing. And so this is a consistent system of equations. Now our next system, there's not a point that is on both graphs in the part that I'm shown. I want to also point out both of these lines have the same slope so that as they go on for uh, towards infinity in either direction, uh, they are going to remain the same distance apart. They're not ever going to get closer together. They're definitely not going to touch. Since they never touch, they're never going to have a point that is on both lines. And so this is an inconsistent system of equations. And finally, this last one, I have two lines that are right on top of each other. They have, um, you know, I can pick this point is definitely on both lines. Actually, one if a point is on one line, it's on the other since their graphs are actually the same. I've made one of them sort of bolder and shorter, but the arrow on the ends means that it goes on forever just like the other one. Those are two equations that have the same line as their graph. But since they do share points, there is a solution. There's actually infinitely many solutions to that equation, sorry, to that system. And so it is a consistent system. So now it asks me to classify the equations of consistent systems as dependent or independent. Remember, dependent means that the equations have the same graph. Two equations are dependent if they have the same graph, which is obviously this situation over here. This one is consistent and dependent. These two equations are consistent, but their graphs are not entirely the same. They only touch in that one place, otherwise they're completely different. And so this is an independent system of equations. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to do a little uh, algebraic solving of systems. Oh, actually, when we talk about solving, uh, this has no solution. We're not asked to do this, but it's worth talking about. This inconsistent system, they never touch. There is no solution. This uh, first system intersects at this one point, which is uh, negative 2, comma 3. It, so it has one solution. The point negative 2, comma 3. And finally, this system has infinitely many solutions. And um, unfortunately, I, well, 
I didn't make it easy to read the equation directly from that graph. Um, we will talk in another video. Um, there are infinitely many sol solutions, but not all points are solutions. Uh, you know, you have points out here that are not solutions. We will need a way to say exactly which points are solutions to this system, and we'll have that in a future video. So now let's go to solving these systems algebraically, these ones down here. The first one here, I'm going to solve using a method called substitution. Notice that, um, well, since this is a system, this y represents the exact same thing as this y, and this first y is equal to x plus 4, so the second y is also equal to x plus 4. Whoops, so this is x plus, sorry, x plus 3, and then I'm substituting in x plus 4. Notice I put parentheses around that when I substituted, that is very important, and that is equal to 12. I distribute this and get 3x plus 12, I subtract 12 from both sides, I get 4x equals 0, divide both sides by 4, and I get x is equal to 0. Now, that is not enough to specify my solution. A solution to a system is a point. Since I have two variables, this is going to be a point in two dimensions, so I have two coordinates, and I need to find out what y is. I can plug this value of x into either equation and solve for y, and they will both give me the same number. However, it's going to be a lot easier for this particular system if I use the very first one. Uh, so y is equal, well, it's y is x plus 4, I'm just rewriting it there. So y is 0 plus 4, which means y is 4. My solution to the system then is the point, ignore that, is the point 0 comma 4. All right, let's do the next one. I'm going to hit the autofocus button here a second. All right. Hopefully that looks a little bit sharper. It looks sharper on my monitor, but hopefully a lot looks sharper for you while watching the video. Now, this one was nicely set up for substitution. I had y equals everything else on this side. I don't have that over here, but it is pretty easy to, to rearrange this first equation. If I add y to both sides and subtract 7 from both sides, I get y is equal to 3x minus 7. So this equation is equivalent to this equation. If I graphed them both, they would have the same graph. Now, I can use this together with this other equation uh, and substitute this into this. I'm doing a lot of pointing here, but I want to point out the one thing that you cannot do here is substitute y equals 3x minus 7 back into the first equation because this is the same equation. Um, I need to bring in the other one. So I've got 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 7 equals 1. So I can distribute my 3. Combine like terms here. That gives me 11x. If I add 21 to both sides, I get 22 on this side. Divide both sides by 11 and x is equal to 2. So now I still need to find out my value of y. I can use either equation to figure out what y is, or I can use the rewritten form of the first equation. So that one is actually what's going to be the simplest to do. 
So y equals 3 times 2 minus 7. Uh, that's 6 minus 7, so that is negative 1. So the solution is the point 2 comma negative 1. All right, with my next problem, I'm going to use a different strategy. I'm going to use a strategy called elimination. If I add the left-hand sides of my equation together, that will be equal to the right-hand sides added together. And what makes that helpful for this particular problem uh, notice that when I add things together, I will combine like terms. When I combine these like terms, I'll have 32x, and that's all well and good. But when I, what makes it nice is when I add negative 13y and positive 13y together, I get zero. So I find a lot of people that really prefer elimination are the same people that really like crossing things out. So if you like crossing things out, elimination may be your preferred solving method. Uh, so I have 32x, now I have to add the right hand sides together. So 32x is equal to 64. Divide both sides by 32 and you get x is equal to 2. And now we can substitute back into either one. Uh, either the first one or the second one is not going to matter. I'll just choose the second one. 15 seems a little more friendly to work with than 17. So I substitute the 2 in for x. I found out that that's the value of x. This is 30 plus 13y equals 43. When I subtract 30 from both sides, I get 13. So, thir oh dear, I am so sorry about that. Very, very sorry about that. Um, so, as you can see, I substituted in to the 15x plus 13y equals 43. Uh, multiplied 15 times 2 to get 30. And then subtracted 30 from both sides, ended up with 13y equals 13. If I divide both sides by 13, I get y equals 1. So the solution to this system is the point 2 comma 1. And finally, I want to use elimination with this system, except um, I don't have things nicely lined up so to cancel out the way that I did here. I can fix that by choosing to multiply by something that will give me what I want. If I want this x to cancel with this one, it needs to have the same number and opposite sign. So this 1, that's the coefficient in front, because if there's not a coefficient, there's an invisible 1. Uh, in order to get it to be the opposite of 2, I need to multiply by a negative 2. If I multiply this side by a negative 2, I need to multiply this side by a negative 2. And that will give me a negative 2x plus, whoops, or minus 4y equals negative 8. Now the first equation uh, is, and I'm going to change color, so this equation came from there. Now I'm just going to recopy down the first equation. So notice that I'm using both equations. I'm now going to add them together. Um, so I have a 2x and a minus 2x. That'll cancel out and be 0. 4y and minus 4y, well, that's going to cancel out as well. I get to do lots of crossing out in this problem. So I have 0 as my entire left-hand side. And 0 is equal to negative 16. This is, well, that's always false. 
This is always false. <clears throat> so, this system has no solution. Uh, if I had gotten something that was always true, like 0 equals 0, then there would be infinitely many solutions. If we remember our types of systems that are listed up at the top of the paper, so I think I have another copy here that I can bring down so we can look at both at the same time. So this system, because this is always false, um, I was looking for um, uh, one coordinate of my intersection point. Since I got something that's always false, there is no intersection point, so there's no solution. So I have an inconsistent system. If I had gotten something that was 0 equals 0 or any other n number equals itself that's always true, I would have a consistent and dependent solution like this one. It wouldn't look exactly like this, but the two equations would have exactly the same graph. So hopefully that refreshes your memory of our review of systems of linear equations. And, um, and that's it for this video.